Welcome back to the Market Madness Podcast. We're here with Jonah Lipton, at Jonah Lipton on Twitter. One of my favorite follows. If you're not already following him, get on it. This is the guy to come to for all your favorite stock picks. Jonah, it's awesome to have you on here. I'm so excited to talk your favorite stocks and to talk about this tournament. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Cool. Your stocks are super interesting picks. You know, you're doing some stuff with social capital here. Now, what are the DNA and the fundamentals of the two stocks that you have in this tournament? So the two stocks that I went with are DermTech and Celsius. So I'll talk DermTech first. So DermTech is a company that created these genomic smart patches. So skin cancer is the number one form of, of cancer in the U.S. Uh, melanoma is the most aggressive and the most deadly of the skin cancers. And what DermTech did was create these little patches that are about the size of a quarter. Uh, so you can go to your dermatologist and they can use these patches on your suspicious moles to determine if there's anything there that, that could be problematic rather than just jumping into, this, into the biopsy, which means that you know, they're basically using a scalpel to cut off of your piece, a piece of your mole and then look at it under a microscope. So you know, there are 4 million biopsies done every year. And I think DermTech could probably prevent a lot of those unnecessary biopsy, biopsies from happening. Um, so the, the patch costs about $760. There's uh, about 85 million people right now that, that are covered from their insurance carrier for the DermTech patch. I believe there's 280 million people in the U.S. that have health insurance. So, I mean, there's still a long ways to go, but it's a great start for the company. Um, so I'm pretty excited about the stock. You know, it's, it's about a one and a half billion dollar company. You know, they're coming off of a year where they did about $6 million in revenue, but we're going to see that, that ramp up pretty quickly as the economy opens, dermatologists can start having sales reps come in because it's kind of hard to launch a new product like this if your sales reps can't even go into the offices and explain the benefits to the dermatologists. So I do think that Dermtech's uh, suffered from the pandemic in that way. But, you know, as things start to get back to normal, I would expect that we start to see that that 200 percent revenue growth that I'm sort of forecasting for the next couple of years. Well, on that note, you just interviewed the CEO of Dermtech the other day, right? Yep. So yep. what was your biggest takeaway from that interview? Um, so right now, they definitely want to work with dermatologists. They really don't want this to be, they don't want any of their products to be DTC, meaning direct to consumer. They believe that the dermatologists do play an important role here. And I, I agree. I mean, they're the, they're the experts, um, but it, it's, it's a struggle to get these dermatologists or really any medical professionals to adopt new technologies. You know, they go through med school and then internships and they, you know, they're trained a specific way. And if you do it that way for 10, 15, 20 years, you know, you can't expect them to pivot to this new technology just, you know, just because you said so, or just because the data looks good. And I think that is one, one important part to note is uh, there's a group called NCCN, which is the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, which is funded by the 30 largest uh, cancer institutes in the, in the world. And they're basically responsible for coming up with the guidelines and they gave DermTech uh, the stamp of approval back in December, which is what got the stock moving from about low teens up into the 20s. And then the Bl Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas came out and said that their 6 million members would be covered with this patch. So, you know, there's 30 other Blue Cross Blue Shields and they do tend to follow each other. So right now, three of the largest, which is Illinois, California, and Texas, have all come out in support of DermTech and their patch. I would expect the other 29 or, tw or, or 28 uh, Blue Cross Blue Shields or Blues to come out and do the same thing. Um, I mean, John Doback, uh, who runs DermTech, incredibly smart guy, very accomplished. He's got a good handle of what the strategy is. He's focused on the US right now. I mean, I think we all agree that international could be a huge opportunity, but he wants to focus on the US right now. You know, you, you, you can get to a, you know, half a billion dollars in sales over the next five years, just focused on the US, given the, you know, the prevalence of skin cancer in this country. Uh, the pipeline looks really good for them. They have two other patches in the pipeline for other forms of skin cancer. They have patches that will help detect or analyze your skin for UV damage, acne, psoriasis, all sorts of other skin diseases and skin ailments. They have partnerships with Johnson & Johnson, L'Oreal, and some other big companies. Because what they want to do is, you know, they're creating a genomics skin platform so that they're going to have all this data on people's skin that they can use and, you know, partner with larger companies to help create 
products, drugs, and whatnot to, you know, treat these diseases and help people live, you know, longer, healthier lives. So I'm excited. I, I think the company has a very, very bright future. It's my largest position in both my personal account and my social capital fund. Uh, if you look at exact sciences on a chart and where exact sciences was five or six years ago, uh, they were at about $5 million in revenue. Exact Sciences is now doing about $1.5 billion in revenue. And the stock is up about 20x over the last five years. I think you know what they're doing in colon cancer is similar to what uh, I think Dermtech can do for skin cancer. So I'm sort of, you know, my thesis here is kind of, um, you know, looking at what Exact Sciences did, did and hoping that Dermtech can replicate that. Yeah, God willing, especially with the mission that they're Absolutely. on. Absolutely, yep. Okay. That's yeah, I mean, because with, with melanoma, so there's a 90, 99% recovery rate uh, if you catch melanoma in the early stages, but that goes down to about 24% if it's advanced. So it's so important that we catch skin cancer and especially melanoma as early as possible. And there's a lot of people that don't want to have someone cut into their skin with a scalpel. So if you can go with this non-invasive patch first, and if there's anything suspicious, then you do the scalpel and the biopsy. I just think more people will be willing to do the patch first and we can help detect skin cancer in more people earlier. And I mean, that's where it's a win-win-win. It's a win for the patient, right? Because they don't get unnecessary biopsies. It's a win for the dermatologist because they're helping their patients catch skin cancer earlier. And it's a win for the insurance companies because it's a hell of a lot cheaper to... Um, you know, get rid of or uh, ex extract the melanoma, you know, the cancerous cells early on to treat it early, then treat it once it's, be, you know, in its advanced stages. So win, win, win. Yeah, 100%. As someone who hits, hates needles, hates blood, I can totally relate to just wanting to put that patch on, right? Having that ability that that really is a game changer. And I'm very excited to continue following the company as well. Let's talk about the fundamentals and DNA of Celsius for a second before we get into social sentiment. So Celsius is a, I call them an energy drink company. I mean, they do have other products. It's not all energy drinks. They also have some powdered products. Uh, some of their products have more caffeine than others. Some are, you know, heavier on the BCAs, but it's a healthier energy drink. You know, for anyone that knows the energy drink space, Red Bull and Monster have kind of dominated this industry for the last two decades. And now there's a few newcomers like uh, Bang and Celsius. So uh, Celsius is, you know, they make a lighter, more refreshing drink. It's in skinnier cans, 12, 12 ounce cans, uh, with about 150 milligrams of caffeine, uh, slightly fruitier flavors, but way less sugar. I actually, there's no sugar in these cans. Uh, and instead they use stuff like, uh, caffeine, they use green tea. Uh, so they use some healthier ingredients, but, you know, in terms of fundamentals, that's where this, the story really is strong because, uh, before the pandemic started, they were just starting to get into retail. They were going into the gyms, uh, but then the pandemic started and retail kind of shut down, the gym shut down. So they turned their attention to Amazon for e-commerce. They became one of the fastest growing brands on Amazon. They're like first or second in the energy drink category right now. Uh, they're actually having a hard time keeping up with demand on Amazon. If you go on there, you can see Amazon uses the you know, their dynamic pricing model, which is basically supply and demand. Uh, and when the price is going up, it basically means that there's a shortage of product. And recently prices for Celsius on Amazon have been going up. Um, but where the story is the strongest is now that the economy is reopening and kind of life's getting back to normal, gyms are reopening, you know, that's going to open up these two other sales channels again. Uh, and right now, so when they reported earnings a couple of days ago, um, the numbers were not blowout, which I think people were expecting because year-over-year uh, -year growth for Q3 of 2020 was 80%, and it was only around 50% for Q4. But I mean, that's still backwards looking, you know, pre-vaccine rollout, you know, now that, you know, the vaccine's out there, you know, half the country is basically vaccinated with the other half getting vaccinated over the next couple months. I think we're going to start to see foot traffic come back to the retail stores, uh, they announced on the call that they have over 82,000 U.S. store partners right now, and they're also switching to a DSD model. So DSD is direct store delivery, which is important because up until now, they've basically been sending product to the retailers distribution centers, and then it has to go from the distribution centers into the stores. 
And a lot of times that, that, that process is broken or there's just errors made along the way and product is not sent in time to the stores and there's no one restocking these shelves as frequently as they should be. So, you know, there's a lot of stories out there of people walking into a store to buy Celsius and the shelves are empty. You know, the Red Bull shelf is full, the Monster shelf is full and the Celsius shelf is empty. DSD will fix that because their DSD partners will be responsible for, I mean, literally, you know, bringing the product into the stores, stocking the shelves, making sure that, you know, the end caps are set up, that everything's merchandised correctly. So it'll prevent a lot of those, you know, kind of out of stock problems that have been plaguing, plaguing the company, which is another reason I think that's why we didn't see a blowout quarter from them is just because they weren't fully into that DSD model yet. The other thing that they're doing is these branded coolers. So, I mean, we've all gone to the stores before and seen like the Coke cooler, the Pepsi cooler, the Monster cooler. Now you're going to start to see Celsius coolers. So they've already announced that they have 200 branded coolers in stores already with another 1,200 on the way. But I'm sure that's just the beginning. Uh, they said there's about a three-month payback on those coolers because they're basically giving the cooler to the store for free, right. knowing that it's going to help juice sales. And they said that some of those 200 stores that already have a branded cooler are seeing a 200% increase in Celsius sales, which yeah. is a monster number. So, you know, I don't know how quickly they can get thousands of coolers out into their, you know, into their partners and retail stores, but, you know, 1400 is obviously a good start with, I'm sure more to go, you know, international growth is still on the table. You know, they didn't see much international growth this past year because of the pandemic. But, you know, I can tell from their recent hirings that they're definitely putting a focus on international growth. So, you know, the company did about 130 million last year. They haven't given any guidance yet for this year. I would be shocked if we don't see another, you know, so they did grow revenues last year at 74%. So even though revenues were only about 50% for Q4, they were 74% year over year for the entire year. I would expect that 2021 looks as good, if not better than that. Uh, which takes us over 200 million in revenue. And then I think this company can grow 50% maybe for the next three or four years as they bring on more retail partners, more DSD. Um, so the overall, I mean, I, I, and then like, like the final thing I say is the energy drink category is so big. Right now, the global energy drink category is $60 billion a year, and it's growing at nine and a half percent a year, which takes it to about $100 billion in five or six years. And my, my thought is that Celsius can probably capture about two and a half percent of that. So two and a half percent of 100 billion is 2.5 billion. You know, you kind of work backwards from where they are right now at 200 million. And that gives you like 40, 45% um, annualized return over the next uh, five years. So, wow. So, the very fantastic breakdown of exactly how they are structurally getting that brand out there, how they're going to increase sales, and how they're beating the competition in several areas. So, a quick question just on the Celsius stock, and then we'll move into the social sentiment side of things. They obviously had the drop of 20% the other day. They're actually green on the day to day. Must be nice. Yep. Uh, did you? buy more on that drop? What do you think? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, that's what I do with all my growth stocks. I mean, I know that, you know, they run hot and then they pull back and that's typically what I'm waiting for. So, you know, as my favorite stocks and top positions are running hot, um, I'll build up cash, you know, as cash comes into my account. And then when those stocks pull back five, six, 10%, you know, whether it's just kind of an intraday pullback or it's, you know, to a moving average, a 10 to 20, a 50 day moving average, you know, that's when I'll look to, add to that position aggressively. Yesterday morning, the stock was actually down 30% at one point, which seemed like such a, an, just a dramatic overreaction. So I actually sent a tweet out, I forget what time it was, but like immediately when I sent the tweet out, the yeah. stock started to reverse. I think it jumped about 15 or 16% off the lows. And I basically just, I explained it, you know, in that tweet, in that tweet thread, what I just told you guys, which is, People are not understanding the story. You know, they, they've had some supply issues. It's growing pains. It's, you know, uh, switching over to DSD. You know, all of these new retail partners are just coming on board in some cases. You know, they're in Target, Walmart, Costco, Speedway. I think like 60% of all energy drink sales happen in convenience stores. And they're just starting to roll out into the convenience store channel. So like there's still so much growth ahead for this company. And I just think people were overreacting to a soft Q4 number and kind of, you know, losing, like, lo I don't know, lo losing sight of the, of that long-term picture, which right. is absolutely still in intact. Right. Like 
one soft quarter in the middle of a pandemic doesn't change the story for me. So I absolutely bought more stock yesterday and I actually bought more stock again today. Yeah, definitely important to realize kind of what's a good problem, right? They have some good yeah. problems on their back. Um, so very interesting. Let's talk on the touch on the social sentiment and I'll, I'll turn it over to Drew for maybe some strategy questions for this tournament. So just touching on maybe you want to group them both together. Why do you believe that Celsius and DMTK have the ability to win in a tournament where it's social sentiment and it's popularity? Maybe you're some backing to this. Who else is backing this? And just talk about the, the popularity of these stocks. So, I mean, I've been pretty bullish on Dermtech for the last couple of months since I did a write-up on it. And since I have a lot of followers on Twitter and newsletter subscribers, other people on Twitter have also gotten excited about Dermtech, you know, for all the reasons that I laid out already, which was, you know, just not the fact, you know, well, okay. So first skin cancer is the, you know, the, the most prevalent cancer out there. So a lot of people that are on Twitter have known someone that's been affected by skin cancer in one way or another, you know, a friend, a family member. So if there's a product out there, or in this case, a company that has a product that can help save lives by detecting skin cancer early, I think that's the kind of company that, that lots of people want to rally around. So I do think, you know, in general, there's a lot of reasons why people on Twitter should be bullish on a company like Dermtech, not just because of the insane returns that it could, you know, uh, give us over the next four or five years, but the fact that they really are out there trying to save lives and, and make humanity better. Um, Celsius, I, I just think there's a lot of people out there that have, you know, consumed Red Bulls and Monsters their entire life. And, you know, I think once you switch over to Celsius, I think you appreciate that is it's healthier for you. It doesn't have all those artificial flavors and chemicals and sweeteners. Um, and it's a little bit lighter. So like during the day when I'm working at my computer trading, I don't want to sit here and drink Red Bull all day or Monster, but I absolutely have a couple um, Celsius during the day. And Why? So talk about specifically what that difference feels like to you. Uh, what, between Monster, between, Red Bull, yeah, and Celsius? All, yeah, all these other energy drinks and Celsius. Yeah, I mean, so th th there's a lot more artificial stuff in there um, or sugars in some cases. I mean, a lot of them, like a lot of them started out with, with tons of sugar. I mean, I think the first Monster and Red Bulls that came out had like, 40, 50, 60 grams of sugar in there. It was insane. Now they've all come out with like their no sugar alternatives, but there's a lot of artificial crap in there to make up for the sugar um, versus Celsius, which is putting, you know, healthier products in there, right? The green tea, the guarana, all of that, some, you know, ginger roots and stuff like that. So, you know, more natural ways of, you know, giving us that energy boost. So when I'm, when I'm drinking or when I used to drink Red Bull, Monster, or even Bang, you get more of like that spike and then the crash versus with Celsius, it feels like a, um, like a, I guess a more gradual or- Yeah, sustained. Um, yeah, sustained um, energy boost. So, you know, just a, like a, cle a cleaner energy boost. I mean, there's probably a few ways you could describe it, but I'd say like a cleaner energy boost where you're not spiking and crashing. It's, it's more gradual. Very interesting. What do you have going one? all the way down to number one, who's winning this tournament in your eyes. You obviously have a amazing following. Is it Derm Tech? Uh, yeah, I'd have to go with Derm Tech. I mean, in terms of like my own investment strategy, I'm looking for companies that can be five baggers, 10 baggers, 20 baggers, and then holding those stocks through volatility and adding on pullbacks. And for me, like if I look at all the stocks out there that I own and don't own, Durham Tech's the one that to me has the most potential. You know, this is the kind of stock that could literally be a 20 bagger over the next five or six years, which is exactly why it's my biggest position and why I think other people are so bullish on it because they see the potential in this stock. And then they can look at exact sciences and see what that company has done and be like, oh my God, I missed that, but now I have a second chance. So what? yeah, it's, it's definitely Durham Tech. How about um, the rest of the bracket? Is there any underrated players that you think could have a following come out, back them, and they could take the sweep? I mean, with the Reddit stocks or the meme stocks, I mean, you never know how those guys or investors can rally behind something. You know, I, I definitely wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't be picking any value stocks, of course. So, you know, I'm focused on that growth category. I mean, since this is a, a Twitter tournament, more or less, you know, you have to look at the stocks that have the, you know, like the fan favorites on Twitter. So I think that's going to be, you know, of course, Tesla, um, C-Limited, Square, 
So I think those are the companies that probably have a really good shot at winning and maybe even knocking off one of my favorite stocks. So, you know, my three top positions are, are Celsius, Dermtech, and then Mohawk. I think three of them, all three are going to be in this tournament. So those are the three that I'm rooting for, of course, but I mean, you never know. I mean, these, these sentiment tournaments can, can surprise you. So I, I, if I was going to pick one, I'd probably have to pick Tesla. I mean, it's kind of hard to bet against the, the Tesla fanboys. Yeah. There's a lot going on there. Drew, anything else from you? Yeah. How are you going to approach the boomer section of this bracket? I know it's a section that you just wish you could cross right out with a big red pen, <laughs> get that thing out of this bracket. Are you going to flip a coin? Um, What's the thought process going into that? Do I have to fill out the boomer bracket? <laughs> you know, it's, it's just like March Madness. You got to fill it all out. Can, can I do my own write-ins? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll have to take another look and see what stocks are in there. I mean, I, it's definitely a lot of the value plays, the Berkshires, the Cokes, Pepsis, Boeings, IBMs. I mean, I'm personally not too excited about those types of companies. I think Amazon might be in there. So if Amazon's in there, that's probably the one that I'm going with, um, just because I think it is still a phenomenal company with an, an insane ecosystem. And I mean, they're just so far ahead of everybody else in terms of you know, distribution, logistics, warehouses. I mean, they are an absolute behemoth. Um, so yeah, if I remember correctly, Amazon would probably be my pick to come out of the boomer section. Perfect. And I guess just to wrap it up, is there anything you want to tell your audience about this uh, tournament or anything you just want to get out to them? Yeah. Uh, make sure that you, uh, you pick Derm Tech and Mohawk and Celsius, <laughs> or I think Derm Tech might be going up against one of those. So uh, yeah, go with Derm Tech. I mean, they are, they're, they're making a real difference um, and, and trying to save people's lives. And this is just the beginning for them. They have two or three other products in the pipeline. And I think this is going to be a 20, 30, $40 billion company in five to 10 years. So uh, I'm, I'm riding this train all the way there. I think that covers everything today. We hit on the fundamentals and DNA. We hit on the social sentiment of your favorite stocks, mainly talking about Derm Tech and Celsius too, which I am becoming more passionate about as every minute that I listen to you. I'm really excited to see how they do in this tournament. Um, just so everyone knows, this tournament is going to be opening on Monday at noon. I'm sure everyone will see all of the different marketing graphics, which will be posted from our affiliates. And yeah, I'm just really excited to break it down. This was the fourth podcast in the series. We have a few more coming throughout the week. Thank you so much for joining us, Jonah. It's always a pleasure talking with you. I'm just really disappointed there's not a can of Celsius on my desk. This is like the the first time in two weeks that I can't grab a Celsius can. Product. I just took a bunch of them down to the garage and threw them in the recycling bin. So uh, I got to go grab one, crack it, because I'm actually interviewing the CEO of Celsius in about an hour and a half. So I got to make sure that I got a couple of cold ones to, to drink on air. Perfect. We'll make sure to tune into that.